Okay, I wanna do a little tutorial on how to use Python to do root finding. Um, for example, how to solve equations numerically with this method, uh, equations that can't be solved analytically so we can solve more complex problems. So I'll do a few of these examples in Python. I'll show you how to program it um, and all will be clear. So, you know, to start out, let's do an easy example. Let's say you have uh, the following equation, x squared plus three x equals e to the square root of x. Um, and the problem is uh, you, wanna, you wanna solve for x, but this is uh, non-linear. So say non-linear. And also uh, we need to, so, you know, accordingly we need to solve this numerically, okay? And so what happens is uh, if you look at the left-hand side of this equation, uh, it'll look something, say like this, so I'll, I'll look, this would be the left-hand side. And if you look at the right-hand side of this equation, it's gonna probably look something like this. So it'll, this will be the right-hand side. And what we're looking for is uh, where these two equations equal each other. And so you can see that's gonna be somewhere here. Um, we need to find that value. Okay, so how do we do this if we can't solve it analytically? Um, you should know this from you know some, some intro math classes. Uh, well, the first thing we could do is, uh, I mean, there's many ways to solve these things, but I'm just gonna do an example for root finding. Okay, so let's move this to the other side. So we could say x squared plus three x minus e to the square root x um, equals zero. And then what do we do? Well, we find the root. And there are a number of numerical methods to find roots. I'm not gonna teach you all the theory behind root finding. I just wanna show you how to use Python, okay? So let's find the root of this equation. Uh, where it equals zero, instead of solving for where the two equations equal to each other, we'll solve where these cross um, and equal zero. Okay, so, uh, for, oh, so for this, um, let me turn off the iPad here. Let's, let's look at uh, some code, how we would do this. So the functions, uh, first we wanna import our libraries. So we'll import, um, I'll zoom in here for you a little bit. Uh, NumPy is our, a classic. So let's import NumPy as np. Um, I'll show you some plots. So let's import matplotlib.py plot as uh, plt is kind of the common notation. And then uh, to do root finding, the library you're gonna wanna use is scipy, okay? So from scipy.optimize, this is the library which has the function we want. We wanna import, uh, F solve. And again, there's many different ways to do this in Python. I'm just showing you one of them um, that I've used uh, a few times. Okay, so let's take this, you know, arbitrary example. So first let's define our function. So to define a function, we'll define, let's give it a name of the function. We'll just say function one, uh, and it's a function of X. So we wanna say this is, uh, we'll return, well, we say X squared plus three times x minus, um, this is the equation we just showed, np dot exp um, x to the one half, okay? So this was the equation that equals zero. If you remember on the, um, on, on the previous, well, I'm not gonna pull it up, but the idea was this is the equation that we had and, um, Let's, let's plot this, okay, to see exactly what it looks like to get an idea. Okay, so to plot, we can do plot, figure, and then, uh, you know, I like to number them so that we can add things to the plots. Number, I always put DPI equals 120, so I can use these figures for something, otherwise the resolution is really low. Um, and then we'll say plot, and we need to give it a list of X values, okay? So the X values, I know the intercept for this ahead of time, but um, you could check it's going to be between somewhere between zero and one, okay? So let's make an, an X list so we can use this function lin space. So it's gonna make a linear list of values between zero and one. And then, you know, we can put a number, we'll say a thousand points between zero and one. So this would be a list between zero and one. Um, and uh, now let's plot uh, this X list and then this function evaluated at the X list, okay? So now we've, we've defined this function, so all we need to do is put in this argument. So this is gonna be function one and then evaluated at 
the points X list. So it'll give us a list evaluated at every point in, in this, you know, input that we put here. Um, okay, so this is gonna be our plot and I'm gonna add a label. I'm gonna say the label should be, this is our function one. Now I also wanna plot the zero so we can see where it crosses zero. So I'll plot the same X values, I'll plot um, zero. So I need an array of zeros so I'll just take X list multiplied by zero, and this will just give us an array of zeros. Um, that's the same length as the X values. So this is our X values, this is our Y values. And, um, you know, I'll make this dashed. You can add a little dash in there like this to, to say you can look up the matplotlib function, but, you know, I like to add it dashed. And the label, I'll say this is, you know, this would be like the Y equals zero function. And then to make these labels show, I'll say plot legend, okay? So we can run this, this is in Spider. And uh, if you go to the plots tab, it'll show up and here we have it, okay? So here's uh, this equation we're trying to solve, uh, which is blue is the function one. And we see that between zero and one, there's gonna be one root, okay? So it crosses uh, zero, which is this dashed line here, near 0 0.6, somewhere around there, okay? So what we wanna do is find a numerical method to solve for uh, this root or to solve for X numerically. And this is going to be with F solve. Okay. And so how F solve works is we've already imported it so that we can just directly call it. Um, and we're going to say the root is equal to F solve. And then look, it gives you all the information here. So you need to give it a function. You need to give it X naught, which is the initial guess. Um, which is just the method it's using to find the roots and then a bunch of other information for this example it's an easy one so we just need to put the function so the function one now you don't need to put an argument uh so i'm sorry you don't need to put the variable so it's assuming that um there is some variable if there was a list of variables it would just take the first one as the variable so you know you just put the name of the function and it knows it's a function of x or whatever the first variable you input in okay so this is function one would be all you write. And then you have to give it the initial guess, this X naught. Now we know the root should be near 0 0.6. I'll say, you know, it's maybe 0 0.5 as a guess. And uh, that's it. You know, we can evaluate this and uh, I'll go back to our variable explorer and we can see root is equal to 0 0.603, okay? And that's, that's the root, okay? So X equals 0 0.603. It's as easy as that. That's how you solve the equation. Uh, numerically. Now, um, what I want to do is show you a more complex example. Okay. So let me get everything set up here. Okay. So let's, um, now take a more complicated example. This would be like a heat transfer example. You know, this is, I teach a heat transfer class. This would be, um, what you'd see. Maybe you're in that class is why you're looking at this. Um, in this case, we have some sort of two layer system. You know, you've got one layer here, one layer here. Uh, the inside is at 35 degrees. The outside is at 10 degrees. Um, and we wanna know the temperature at this layer, okay? So, you know, the surface is cooling by radiation. Uh, it's cooling by convection. We know the area of the surface. Uh, radiation happens via the Stefan Boltzmann constant. We know the uh, heat transfer resistance through the material we've calculated separately. Um, and, and you know you can you can show with different math. It's not the subject of this um, this particular equation. Okay, and uh, what we want to solve for is what is the surface temperature. Okay, so you can see that this is in red. You see surface temperature here. You see surface temperature here. You see surface temperature here. So how do you solve for the surface temperature? We can't do this analytically like we do a lot of problems. Um, so let's do it numerically. Now, one thing you need to do is, is take note that uh, this is gonna be in, in SI units. You notice there's Kelvin here and Kelvin here. Now, if you have a difference between two temperatures, you can do Celsius, but uh, you know when you're adding them, especially when they're squared, you need to put it in Kelvin, okay? So uh, to get the right units, 35 plus 273.15 equals 308.15 Kelvin, and 10 plus 273.15 equals uh, 283.15 Kelvin. Okay, so let's use these, all this information we have here in this equation, solve for TS. 
And the reason I'm using this is because it's gonna be a little more complex of a function, okay? So you can scroll back if you need to see this. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to you know exit out of this function. And let's take a look in Spider, okay? So now let's let's define another function, okay? So let's this will be the heat transfer example. So here, let's define our function. Uh, so let's call it function two. Now this is gonna be a function. Now, what is the variable we wanna solve for? Um, let's put that first. This is the surface temperature. So yes, there's a lot of unknown variables in this. Um, or some of, there's only one unknown, but we have a lot of variables. So you can put them all in so that you can change them. Uh, but you want the one you're finding the root um, with respect to as the first variable, okay? So all the other arguments are what? We have the temperature infinitely far away. We have the temperature on the inside. We have the area. We have the resistance, the total resistance. We have the convection heat transfer coefficient. We have uh, epsilon. We have the uh, emissivity is what, it, is what this is. And then we have sigma. Now sigma is a Stefan Boltzmann constant. Um, and so when you're defining a function, you can say things by default will be defined. So this one you never want to change because it's a fixed constant. Uh, so an SI unit sets 5.670 minus eight. So if you say that it's equal there, we don't need to input this. It'll just default to this unless we define sigma as something else. Um, and so this is in SI units. And what we will return is the function I showed you on uh, the notes. So for example, uh, this is T infinity minus TI divided by A times R total. And this is gonna be minus um, H plus epsilon times sigma times TS uh, plus T infinity, okay? Times TS squared plus T infinity squared. Um, and this is gonna be times the whole Second part of this after the, after the minus sign, T infinity minus TS. Okay, so this is the function I showed you. Complex nonlinear function, uh, how are we gonna solve this? Um, so again, we can visualize this first. Okay, so let's visualize it. So let's make a, a, a list of temperatures. And um, NP dot lin space. So we know the inside wall temperature is gonna be uh, 308, outside is gonna be 283. So let's make um, some linear space between there. So we'll say 283.15 to 308.15. This is our two extremes. Uh, we know that the temperature of the surface is gonna be somewhere in between those two. We'll say, you know, a thousand points in between there. So we need these values to be able to evaluate the function. Um, and now let's plot it, okay? So I'll do the same thing we did here. We can just copy this and uh, we'll make this plot two. We're gonna plot this for temperature list. And uh, this is gonna be function two and evaluated the temperature list values. And uh, this is gonna be the zero. This is root, so we're gonna find where it equals zero. And uh, we can plot this here, a plot pops up. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so uh, now what we'll need to do in this function is it's not just, okay, the first one we did had one variable. Now when we have these more complex functions, we have a lot of variables, okay? So we're gonna put this list of temperatures for the surface temperature. This is the one we don't know. We're gonna solve for the root as a function of this. All the other ones we know, okay? So uh, these are inputs. So the next one we need is T infinity. So uh, this is gonna be 283.15. T in the inside is gonna be the next one, is going to be 308.15. Then you have the area is 1.8 meters squared. Uh, our total is 0 0.25 Kelvin per watt. Um, what else do we have? The H is next, this is two watts per meter squared Kelvin and the emissivity 0 0.95. And then I don't need to input sigma, a variable for this, because it'll default to this value, which is a fixed universal constant, okay? So now we can plot this and this is what you see. Um, there's going to be a root somewhere around 290 Kelvin, okay? So uh, now we can use this for, for the root finding function, okay? 
So let's do it. Let's say the, the surface temperature is going to equal F solve is this root finding function. Now we need to input the function. So this is function two. Now this is where it gets a little different when you have a lot of variables in a function because here we had one variable. So you put function one and it knows that, uh, you know, X is the variable to check. Now function two, there are actually a lot of variables. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the first uh, input as the variable that matters. Um, so uh, for the root finding. So we need to give it all these other arguments, though, so it knows what to put in. Um, and so let's put function 2 in, and it'll use TS as the one to solve the root with respect to. And then you give it our initial guess. You know, the initial guess we can see from the plot is around 290 for the root. Um, and then uh, what you can do is you can say args. Okay, so you can see this um, in the definition. See in this function description, it tells you that you can put in arguments. Now, what arguments means is everything that comes after the first variable. Okay, these are going to be the arguments that you can input into SciPy. So uh, here we need to put T infinity, T I A R H epsilon. So, okay, let's do it. It's going to be all of these variables will be the arguments. Um, so I hope you understand how to input your different variables. Um, variable you want to solve the root for as a function of, and then these are the arguments and anything that you put an equal sign next to will be, um, a fixed. You don't need to input those as a default to this value. And by the way, you can get rid of all of these and just define them in the function. But for example, if you want to change the convection coefficient, it's really easy to just change H as opposed to having H defined already. This is just, you know, better practice to leave them undefined and, and input them as arguments. But there's so many different ways to do this, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is gonna be F solve. Um, all we've done is add this extra one here. And um, we'll say, uh, just to be clear, this is in Kelvin, in SI units, okay? So uh, we evaluate it, let's look at it. TS is gonna be about 290.977 Kelvin. And uh, if you wanna put this you know, to something more reasonable, TS in Celsius is going to be uh, TS minus 273.15. Let's check this, TS in Celsius is about 17 degrees, okay? So if you, uh, what do we say? The one surface at 35, the other is at 10. And so in the middle is gonna be 17 degrees. And now what you can do is you can quickly change um, H in here instead of being two, say you wanted it to be you know 20 or 200. You can, you can change this and see now the temperature would go down to 10.2 degrees. Okay, so you can change these variables around. Anyway, that's a quick overview how to use F solve. Um, I'll post this code in the comment or in the yeah, video comment. And um, yeah, that's how you do root finding.